Hey guys, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable one-year-old little boy. Hey guys, so I am trying out a new recipe today. I found out about it on Lipton's website. And it is a skillet pasta dinner, I think. I'll make sure to link the recipe in the description box. But it calls for one pound of ground beef, which I have in my skillet here. And then I just um, dropped in a can of whole tomatoes. And now I'm getting ready to add in some, let me show you the box, Lipton beefy onion. I am adding in one package out of the box. It comes with two packages. So I'm just gonna dump that in and give it a good stir. And then it says to crush the tomatoes with the back of your spoon and then to just let it simmer for about 15 minutes, it says. Okay, so my sauce is simmering away. I'm not gonna add any additional salt because of the soup packet. I think that's plenty salty enough, but I am gonna add some Italian seasoning to it. The recipe didn't call for that, but I just feel like it could use it. And then I have two cups of pasta, dry pasta, that I cooked and drained. I didn't rinse, so I'm adding that in. And then the recipe calls for one cup of sour cream. It seems like a lot, but we'll see. I'm gonna start off with half a cup first. Okay, so here's our plate. Here's the pasta. Howard and I tried it. I did not end up adding the other half of that sour cream because Howard and I thought it tasted just fine. And I am serving it with a side salad. I've sprinkled some cheese on top and then a garlic knot from Aldi. I already threw away the box a while back ago. And we are going to use this salad dressing to top the salad. But anyway, it was a quick and easy dinner. i definitely make it again. I do think that the sour cream did cut down on some of that saltiness from the Lipton onion soup. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see y'all next time. Hey, so I am using up some more stuff from our freezer today. So let me show you, this is actually not from our freezer. It's from the pantry and it's a Korean beef barbecue, Korean barbecue beef little kit and so on the back you're supposed to use beef strips onion bell pepper um, and so i'm using what i have so i didn't have any beef in my freezer except for this pre-cooked beef um, and it is like an asian flavored pre-cooked beef kind of like um like gyro or gyro depending on how you say that type of meat and i don't have the original packaging i threw that away a long time ago but um, this little kit comes with, let me flip it over again. It comes with the Korean barbecue sauce, a ginger and garlic paste and sesame seeds. So you're supposed to marinate the beef in the paste. So that is already in there. And then here are the sesame seeds. Here is the sauce. And then I do not have any onions, uh, fresh onions. So I do have some frozen onions that I'm gonna use. And then I have some frozen peppers that I am going to use to put this meal together. Okay, so here's our dinner. I was going to record it, but I was running late today making dinner and I just didn't have time. I was rushing. I left the egg rolls in the air fryer too long. They got a little dark as you can see. But as far as the flavor of the Korean beef, it's okay, nothing special. I probably would not buy it again, um, but I'm just serving it over rice. I ended up adding some broccoli to it, fresh broccoli, because it just needed something. And then the egg roll is from HEB, which I've showed you all before, uh, which is a grocery store here in Texas. Like I said, I just threw them in the air fryer. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see y'all next time. Hey guys, so it is Harrison's birthday and Howard took off and we took um, Harrison out to lunch. So we are at one of our favorite pizza places. We have a large um, margarita pizza and here is the birthday boy. Harrison, say hi. 
that's his high. <laughs> All right, um, so I probably won't cook dinner tonight because we're gonna have leftover pizza and that is what we are gonna be having for dinner tonight. So we will see you guys next time. Hey guys, so I am trying out a new recipe tonight. It is meatball pie, and I will make sure to link the recipe in the description box. But in my pie pan, I have half of a, um, I have one crust out of a two crust box of the Pillsbury. So I have it in there, and on the bottom, I have spread a little bit of marinara sauce. And I am using this one from Aldi. I heard it's really good. Um, now the directions don't tell you how much marinara to put in the pie, so I'm gonna kind of guess. But it said just a thin layer of marinara, and then after that, it says put about four or five slices of provolone. So that is what I'm doing next. And now I'm going to add my meatballs. Now it said to use large meatballs. I did not have large meatballs. I just have the standard grocery store size of meatballs. And in order to make sure that I had enough to cover the bottom of the pie pan, I actually poured them in there before I put them in the oven to warm them up, uh, just to make sure they were gonna evenly cover the bottom of that pie um, shell. So that's about a pound and a half of frozen meatballs um, that I used. I am using the ones from Ikea. Those are my favorite frozen meatballs to use. And so now it says just to add more marinara. And again, it doesn't tell you how much. So I'm just kind of winging it here. So I've used about 75% of this 24 ounce jar. I'm gonna just go ahead and add the rest. I mean, I'm not sure. Okay, well, I didn't add quite all of it. There's probably about 20% left. And so if it's dry, you know, I can always add it to our individual slices. So I'm just spreading this out a little bit. And now I'm just gonna add the rest of that cheese. And then it says just to top it with the other pie crust and crimp the edges and seal it. Okay, now I'm just gonna pop this in the oven for about an hour. <clears throat> excuse me, or until it's nice and golden brown. Okay, so here is the pie out of the oven. I am just, of course that is Harrison in the background. I'm just letting this cool for about 10 minutes. Okay, so here is the meatball pie. Let me get down a little bit so you all can see the inside of it. Has a good flavor. I mean, it's really simple, but it's pretty tasty. And I probably could have used that entire jar of marinara sauce. So next time I make it, I'll just use the whole jar. But, um, and I'm just serving it with a side salad. We had some leftover lettuce, needed to use it. And that is what we are having for dinner tonight. And we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so we are having breakfast for dinner today. So I made some cheesy scrambled eggs. I just used a little bit of whipping cream, a little salt and pepper, and then I added a bunch of cheddar cheese. We are also having some sausage strips. I've had these in my freezer for a while. I got them from Tom Thumb, but they sell them other places. They are made by Johnsonville, and Howard and I can't quite put our finger on what they taste like. Um, to me, they have the texture of turkey bacon. Howard said they kind of reminded him of ham, kind of tasted like ham. They don't taste like ham to me because they do have a sausage flavor. Um, it has a really mild sausage flavor. It definitely doesn't taste like bacon. Um, would I buy them again? Probably not. Are they terrible? No. Um, if you wanted to try it, I'd say definitely try it. It's not something where you're just gonna be so turned off by it that you won't be able to eat it, but it's probably not the best thing that I've ever had. Do you guys remember sizzling? Um, it was around years and years and years ago, and sizzling didn't quite make it. I feel like these sausage strips are kinda in line for that. They, they just don't quite fit into any one category. I am serving some butter croissants, so I am using these great value butter croissants from Walmart. It says no proofing or thawing needed, but I did let mine proof and then I baked them. I um, told you guys about the croissants that I really like from Trader Joe's. So I was really excited to see these from great value. They're not quite the same. They don't taste as good as Trader Joe's, but if you want a nice croissant, um, you know, baked fresh, definitely give the great value a try. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time.